it'll be it'll be painless I promise you um, congratulations what a spectacular film my goodness and I, I was just wondering what was it about Alexander that put you on this quest for so many years to make this movie it's not just me many people have written about him he's an exciting uh, unique man in history he changed the course of history and as well as had a great adventure a great ride through five different cultures he, unif he, he, he conquered anybody who opposed him, as you know, and, but at the same time he included them in the process. He, became, he made them part of his army, he made, and he let them rule, and he respected the local religion and customs, and he was working on the idea of an empire, really, and I think he came very close. Uh, he died young, unfortunately, because perhaps, well, who knows, we, we, there's a lot of reasons yeah. in the movie. But the truth of the matter is that he gave the Romans, I think, he's the prototype for what the Romans took over the idea and kind of made a bigger empire, mm -hmm. uh, but ran it differently. It was more military than Alexander's. So I think Alexander's the last great Greek. And the Greeks, to me, are the home of, the home of freedom. Uh, the home of freedom. Not, I wouldn't say democracy, I would say freedom. The concept of the free soul, the man who, as he says in the Battle of Gagamela, you know, you fight here today as Macedonian freemen. And he did point out that the Persian armies were conscripts, they were slaves. They, they, and if you look at the battle closely, he fights against Darius, the Emperor Darius. Darius gives all the orders. Right. Everything comes from the center. There is no flexibility. Alexander was known for his speed and flexibility. Why Colin Farrell? Speed and flexibility. <laughs> he's, he's a wonderfully... Uh, he gets it. I mean, first of all, he's Irish. and There's something about the Irish which is Celtic, and so are the Macedonians. And uh, he's smart. He's fast, he's a leader, he's dynamic, he's handsome, sexy, and uh, that's what Alexander is to, to the memory of Alexander is to most people. And mm -hmm. He's smart and also generous. You know, there's something about Colin you know you trust him. So he had never tackled something like this. I mean, everything he's done, I agree with you, he's fantastic. I think he's one of the best young actors we have. But how do you know? I mean, you're, you're, you're giving a role to a man who's going to carry this picture for you. How do you know that you've picked the right guy? Well, I think most people pick somebody who's about 38 years old and have him play younger because he's a movie star. That's a danger. You have to go with your gut here. And thank God I had producers who shared this vision. Uh, Moritz Borman uh, found this money and he just believed in Colin from the day one. And, uh, you know, I mean, we were very lucky that Colin got hotter during the process. He grew as a star. He, but when I saw him opposite Tom Cruise in, in Minority Report and opposite Al Pacino, I knew that this was an actor. Uh, he was a very good actor, and I, you know, Tigerland and uh, yeah. Phone Booth, you don't underestimate Colin. Yeah. Many people do because, frankly, he doesn't have the defenses to deal with a lot of the people. He doesn't, he's not a hypocrite, he doesn't lie, and he tends to be who he is. So people misunderstand that and think of him only as a, as a, as a whatever, but yeah. you know, it's not that true at all. Yeah, yeah he's a great guy, that's for sure, I agree with you. I'm glad you cast it in this. Uh, you've given us some grand scale films, no question about it, but this had to have been your most challenging. I mean, were you at all freaked out when you started to work on this project? I was freaked out all the way, probably, in some way, you know, but you, you, I, I had, thank God, experienced a lot of films, and I worked my way up to this level of doing this kind of epic. I wanted to all my life, you know, and this is, uh, this is a combination. But I worked through many different genres before this. Mm -hmm. I wasn't coming to it uh, a virgin. No, definitely not. <laughs> you, uh, the battle scenes were spectacular. I can't even Thank imagine you. shooting shooting those. But let's talk about the scenes with the elephants because that must have been maddening. I mean, just hmm. to get through that. And how close did Colin come to that elephant? Very close. That's him uh, in many of the shots with the elephants. And uh, the elephants were great. They're, they're smart. I had we had great empathy. They, when we say action and cut, when we they were they lit up, they twinkled, they they knew it was show business. Uh, the horses were a little bit more nervous because the elephants are bigger. Uh, but we had special horses for Colin and and the generals brought in from Spain and Germany. They were great big horses. And that horse actually remember the stunt with the horse. Mm -hmm. That horse is doing it. I was amazed. My jaw dropped open. It was just the horse walks on its hind legs for four steps and outlasts the elephant. It's an amazing shot. Yeah, it's an amazing, the whole thing, the whole sequence yeah. is phenomenal to watch it. Uh, the elephants were great. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. Some broken bones, but nothing, uh, the horses were, the animals were, no, no injuries, thank God. Good to hear, good to hear. You have got what, quite yourself cast here. I mean, unbelievable. And I, you know, I've spoken to everybody this morning, and they just revere you as a god, and I don't think that they're bullshitting me. They really, really would kill to work with you. What is it about you, Mr. Stone, that everybody would just die to work with you? 
well, I wouldn't say just everybody. I had to, they, I, I love these people. That's all I, you know, Val I worked with before on The Doors, and it was great to, and he also, he mor in The Doors, he morphs into Morrison. Yes. I mean, he morphs into Alexander. Yeah. In the in the film, if you remember, I and do. then the uh, bust. Yeah. so it's ironic that he ends up playing his father. There's a lot of ironies here. But uh, Angelina, I wanted to work with since Beyond Borders and Gia. And Colin was a fine. He's a discovery. And Mr. Hopkins, I work with Nixon. Yeah. So I just you know I, if I could just find enough people who are talented, uh, keep us a, a, a source, a circle of of influence. So who do you who would you love to direct in a film? Is there anybody out there that you would just kill to work with? And many people, many people, but you know you have to wait for the right thing. You know, I wanted to work with Meryl Streep for many years. I almost did with Evita, you know, but it never. And she wanted to work with me, I think, and it just never came together. It was so close, but that was a you know a legend. After working on this and being so close to the story of Alexander, why? What in your opinion made him so great? Why was he revered? Because he's remembered partly because 2,300 years, not as a conqueror only, and a military genius. And Pizarro conquered the, the Inca Empire, but nobody really remembers him. Uh, and he's revered because he was an inclusionary, and he put people into his plan. He, he was generous of, of spirit and sharing. And uh, as he says in the movie, he freed the people. From, the, from from many of the burdens of the old systems, and they moved into the cities. He started to create the concept of cultural events called cities. Mm -hmm. and there was a flow after his death. The Hellenic Empire and the Eastern Empires were melded, and they lasted. They created a flow of commerce, and f economies boomed, trade happened, languages were shared. Uh, we now find shards of Greek art up in northern Afghanistan. There's, the world is that. I mean, he, he was a globalist in the positive sense. Yeah. There were so many, there were a lot of directors actually who really wanted to tackle this. And at the end of the day, you, you know, you, it was important for you to tell your story, to tell what you wanted to say about Alexander, whether it was about his sexuality or just whatever it was. When do you kind of put all that stuff that people say behind your back, behind you, and just tell a story you want to tell? How hard is that for you? No, it's the key. It's, I'm a dramatist, and you tell the story dramatically, you have to make it exciting. And that's the, always the plan. It was a, it's the wildest adventure ride I know in reality. It's an adventure, what he did. And we, somebody's got to tell it. Nobody's told this story. Why not? Yeah. It's the hardest story to tell, maybe, because it's got too many events. We had to strip away, I don't know, 70% of the events just to even get it down to less than three hours. And in, the, in that time, we try to get the essence of his life. Who is he? What, what is he look, why is he looking for the end of the world? Why? And what does he do when he finds it? Yeah, that's great. I could talk to you forever. Eh? You're just a fantastic filmmaker, and it's a pleasure oh, you, for Mark. me to meet you and talk to you. Thank you very much.